Hey, I'm Carbo Brothers. I'm Chris Nelson, president of Carbo. Really excited to introduce a new trigger job, complete pro level upgrade for your Caltech PF9 pistol. Really making it a real shooter. Really love the fact that we could take something bone stock right out of the box and get it down to a two pound flat trigger pull. Phenomenal. Really love this whole system that we've got together for the PF9. Just makes sense. It was a high five pound trigger pull right out of the factory and plastic trigger with sharp little pointy curve on the end and then that seam down the middle, you know, really creates a lot of flex when you're pulling that trigger when it's plastic. Now with this aluminum flat face trigger just feels outstanding. This is a night and day difference. Feels like a real pistol now. I mean, perfect. This is absolutely what you want in a PF9. Not to mention, really makes it a much more desirable pistol now at this point, considering these are so inexpensive. You can get a few of these, trick them out, and just keep them ready in different places. I mean, I love the PF9 so much more now. A flat two pound trigger feels outstanding. Just love this little pistol. It's a great platform, but just needed a little bit of work here and there. I think we did it. We've got everything nailed down. Really excited to hear you guys' feedback on it, but let's get on over to Tabletop, show you how we put this all together. All right, guys, so you got a brand new PF9, Caltech PF9. This would double as an unboxing video, I suppose. You can see what you'll get here in the box. Obviously your PF9, nine millimeter, seven round mag. You got a little mag extension here, which is handy. You got a little trigger lock that they send you and sticker, owner's manual, sticker, and an NRA application. So that's everything you're gonna get. Nothing hidden. Nope, that's it. And you get the case. Not a bad deal. Really like the PF9. There's just some things that I really wanna do differently that we've set out to do over the last eh, six or eight months. I was looking at the uh, last video we did on this and it was November, 2018, crazy. So a lot of things have changed. You know, even the audio, I'm using a microphone now. <laughs> No more screaming into the camera. So let's go ahead and get into this. This is a fully comprehensive installation video. We're gonna cover everything. The most important critical upgrades, you could consider this the Pro Kit. It's got everything you need for your PF9 all in one. All right, so you can see I've got two PF9s here. Here's the stock one we just unboxed, and then here's the tan one here that we've had in the shop, and we've all tricked out, got a good demonstration kind of side by side before we kick it off. We're gonna go ahead and trick out this factory one here, but it is handy to give you at least a good representation of what we're striving for. Really love this new flat trigger. So let's go ahead and check our firearms together. It's a good time to do that. Check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well. This PF9 is clear. Chamber, bolt face, magazine well. This one's clear. So two excellent little pistols here. One's bone stock from the factory. It's got a lot of plastic. This one here has got a lot of aluminum and stainless in it now. Now, some of the things you'll notice right off the bat, you know, this is a plastic guide rod here on the factory PF9. And you'll notice that we've got it replaced here with a stainless steel guide rod. The stainless steel guide rod is the way to go. Obviously, it's going to last much longer than the plastic guide rod, not to mention it's not going to grab that recoil spring, which is what we've seen. And typically, it'll dig into it. You can even see there's a seam line there on the plastic guide rod. And then the stainless steel guide rod, man, it's just the most premium material, 316 stainless. It's going to last a lifetime. It's just a good insurance policy that you're not going to have any sort of malfunction. You know, considering plastic can bend and warp over time, you know, it could easily induce a malfunction, not to mention that recoil spring is sliding back and forth on it. You know, it's gonna grab, it's gonna drag, it's gonna cut into it. Not gonna happen here on the stainless steel guide rod, just the way to go. That's one aspect. And then obviously the trigger, most noticeable. You can see we've got a nice 6061 aircraft grade CNC machined aluminum trigger. Phenomenal flat face trigger. Just love the way it feels in comparison to this plastic trigger here. Not to mention you can see that plastic seam line in the middle and it is noticeable to the feel when you're pulling that trigger just another little irritation you know it's not necessary it can really just kind of be a pain so you can see here we've also on the flat trigger got a pre-travel adjustment as well as an over travel adjustment which is really handy really nice way to dial it in and get it exactly the way you want it there's still a tad of pre-travel you have to you'll notice when you get yours you can obviously over adjust that pre-travel to the point that it won't even function. So very critical that we do leave some pre-travel on there because it's necessary for the function of this pistol, but you are able to reduce it. And not to mention with that flat trigger, it doesn't feel as bad. With this curved trigger, it really feels like you're kind of pulling back and up. Flat trigger, you're just kind of pulling straight back, which is nice. This curve is just way too sharp. You can see the tip of my finger right there, just kind of, just kind of puncturing into that sharp point. 
You can see the indentation there on my finger. Flat trigger is good because it basically trains the shooter, if you're not already doing this way, to have your finger low on that trigger, you know, just the tip. Nice, gradual, slow, smooth pull. So really love the trigger, just feels much better. We've also got the Max Control 20 pound recoil spring in here to reduce muzzle flip. All right, really great way to help control this little frame. You know, it's a small little concealed carry pistol. You don't want it jumping out of your hands all crazy. And then last but not least, the trigger spring kit to reduce that trigger pull weight. So let's go ahead and do a quick side by side. Stock, spring kit installed. We'll see what the comparisons are between the two. So we've got them both ready to go here. Let's do a quick trigger pull reading, and then we're gonna kick off the installation. Let's see what kind of factory trigger pull we're starting here on the black one. Five pounds, 10 ounces. Let's see what we got over here in the tan one that's been modified. One pound, 15.5 ounces. Now, obviously a sub two pound trigger pull is amazing. On the tan one, we did a little bit of our own custom work. We offer custom installation services. We also do polishing. So the polishing definitely adds a little bit of a trigger pull reduction as well. We're striving for a significant trigger pull reduction, but I'm really curious to see what we get just with these parts alone in this stock factory PF9 that's never even been fired. So really excited about it. So. The kel PF9 trigger spring kits, what you're gonna need comes with a replacement lighter firing pin spring, hammer spring, and a trigger return spring, your stainless steel guide rod, the PF9 flat target trigger, which is 6061 aircraft grade aluminum, comes with your pre-travel adjustment, your over-travel adjustment, and then your max control 20 pound recoil spring, really great way to help reduce some of that muzzle flip. Parts and tools needed for this build, a medium tip flathead screwdriver, a micro tip flathead screwdriver, a 1 8 inch punch, 3 32 inch punch, 1 16 inch punch, a T10 Torx key, that's that little star bit, hammer, pliers, bench block, synthetic grease of PTFE, blue 242 removable Loctite, a Sharpie, flashlight would be handy, and as always guys, make sure we're an iPro. All right, so we get started by racking the slide back. And what we're gonna do is remove that assembly pin right there, so take your micro tip, there's a little pocket, just pop it right out, pull out the assembly pin, set that aside, go ahead and release the slide lock, pull the slide forward, you got your pistol grip frame, your slide now, so go ahead and set your pistol grip frame aside for a minute. We're gonna go ahead and focus on this slide really fast, do what we need to do there, and then move forward with the installation. So we can start by removing our factory plastic guide rod and recoil springs. We're gonna be replacing these, um, so you can set these aside, keep them handy for later. These guide rods just snap like that, it's crazy. So no need to have that, especially in your concealed carry firearm. We'll go ahead and we'll pull out the barrel Set that aside. And then we're gonna go ahead and replace the firing pin spring, which is inside the slide here. All right, you can see there's your firing pin. What we have to do is remove this extractor spring in the extractor. So this is when you're gonna need your T10 Torx. So we'll go ahead and loosen it up, remove the extractor and extractor spring. Just hold down on that spring there help keep everything together. It's nice to be able to just watch it come apart slowly rather than explosion. I always find it helpful. So there's our screw, which is what locks that firing pin in place. And you'll see that here in a second. We'll go over that. Here's our spring. And then here's your extractor right here. And you'll notice the orientation. There's that little sharp point facing down. This is nice to pay attention to those little details as we're pulling it all apart. All right, little sharp point facing down. Now we can go ahead and remove the firing pin. So typically your firing pin would just fall right out or you could just take a little micro tip and just kind of let it spring itself out. But if that doesn't work, you know, I've seen this from time to time. See, that one's pretty much coming out. You know, it, this is mass production machining, so there could be a burr in there or something that's hanging up. Not to mention there could be a burr on those threads. There is a screw that holds it in place. So just something to be mindful of. You know, if it's stuck, you can always put a couple drops of oil down here on the bolt face. But the last resort, you take your 1 16th inch punch and you can just push through on the firing pin like so. You know, and if it's stuck, you're gonna know it because you're gonna feel it more or less kind of pop loose. Um, you know, it's not like you're hammering on the tip of the firing pin, you're not gonna damage it. You can also closely inspect it if you need to, but it's just one of those things. So if you run into that issue, there it is. You know, this is brand new. Um, it's just one of those things, unfortunately, during assembly too, that something can get 
goofed up. So just a little quick help in case that happens. So we got the firing pin out. All right, then it's just a matter of getting the factory firing pin spring out of there. Should come right out. Now, if it doesn't come right out, I would recommend, especially if it's brand new, just lube this baby up on the inside. We're gonna do this just to make sure that everything is smooth, no issues. You know, it should get a good cleaning once you open it up anyway, because there's gonna be just naturally some assembly, grime and grease. Just a good way to make sure we're starting off on the right foot. So you can use your CLP and clean it up real good. And then lubricate inside where that firing pin's going and the new spring just helps. Gonna help in the assembly, help in the function, you name it. So nice idea, especially as we're starting it off here, we're starting it off right. So now we can go ahead and grab the Keltec PF9 trigger spring kit by Carbo. Open it on up. We'll save our factory springs. Might as well. Never hurts to have a spare. So go ahead and pop open this kit. And you'll see here's the springs here. We've got the lighter firing pin spring here, lighter trigger return spring here, and a lighter hammer spring. So these all work in conjunction and give us a nice, light, smooth, crisp, clean trigger pull, which can't wait to get this baby in. So we can set our factory spring aside, lay out the kit springs here. We'll start with the lighter firing pin spring. We're gonna drop it right in. The extractor's on this side here. So what we'll do is we'll put the firing pin in just like so. I'm gonna make a quick little mark with the Sharpie so I know which way is correct. And it'll help me align it perfectly without guessing. So I'm gonna slide it right in. And it helps too to obviously just kind of guide it in and make sure it's lined up. You'll be able to make little subtle adjustments once it's in there but ideally we just get it right from the start. Then we'll take our extractor and drop that right in. That little sharp point's gonna be down. So we're gonna drop it right in, right there. You can see that little sharp point's down. I can still see that my line is right at the 12 o'clock there, so we're good. Pretty much stays in place. Then we'll take our extractor spring and we'll drop that right into the cutout here. That's what keeps pressure on it. And then we're gonna take our little Torx screw and get our T10 Torx key ready. And while we're at it, throw a little bit of blue 242 Loctite on there. It just helps ensure that it doesn't back out on us during operation. Just a little dab will do you. And then we'll drop it right in. At least get the thread started, keep some pressure on it. Check and make sure your little line is right there at the 12 o'clock, which it is. Then we're gonna have to compress this while we're screwing it in. So we'll compress the firing pin, our slide on the table there, keeping everything under tension. And then we screw in that torque screw. All right, go ahead and tighten it down real good. And then we're gonna check and make sure that that firing pin's captured. All right, we'll take our flathead and we're gonna check it. You just wanna make sure that it doesn't spring out on you. So it's good and captured. I can still see my little black line right there. Let me know that this feature is right where it's supposed to be. A nice little reassurance that you got it in and it's not just gonna spring out on you. So that's good. So the operation's good. We got our firing pin spring replaced. Perfect, now let's go ahead and put the rest of the slide back together. Real easy, and go ahead and drop our barrel in. I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of CLP, just cause it's bone dry. I mean, right from the factory, not a lick of oil on it. Just a good way to make sure we're starting off on the right foot. I'll go fast. I know you guys are waiting on me. <laughs> All right, there it is. So, dropped right in. Now we'll grab our stainless steel guide rod, 316 stainless steel. Just can't beat it, man. Yeah, that's way better than plastic, especially cheap plastic that just breaks in half with a simple little snap. So we got our 316 stainless steel guide rod, beautifully machined, awesome, love it. And then we've got our max control recoil spring. Really nice way to help control that muzzle flip. It just makes sense. You know, you don't want that thing jumping out of your hands. Not to mention springs need to be replaced anyway. So if yours is well used, it's probably due for a tune-up. It's a little smaller diameter spring, goes inside the bigger diameter spring. Just feed them in like that. And then go ahead and put your 
guide rod through as well. So now we're just gonna go ahead and drop this assembly right into the slide, recoil spring captures in the front. You just push it all the way forward. Make sure you feed it through that hole there on the slide. And then you want it to locate right there in that lug on the barrel. All right, so our slide assembly is back together. We replaced the plastic guide rod, we replaced the recoil springs, and we also replaced the firing pin spring internally. Awesome, now we can go ahead and focus on the pistol grip frame. We're about halfway done. Good job, guys, keep hanging with me. All right, so the pistol grip frame I find goes pretty quick. You're just gonna take your medium tip flathead, and what we're gonna do is pull up on this hammer seat right here. So you're just gonna pull straight up on it, and you know keep it controlled, because it's naturally gonna wanna pop out of your hands. So you're just gonna pull up, and you're gonna move it forward. It's like kind of one slow, deliberate motion, and you're gonna let it just pop back down into the magazine well. You'll notice there's those two little tabs right there. That's what it has to clear so that it can drop right in. So just pulling it up, moving it forward, letting it drop. That's the simplest way to do it. Now what we'll do is tap out these three plastic frame pins there. You'll just take your 1 8 inch punch and your hammer, and you know, start with either one of them. I start with the back one here, and just tap them out. Doesn't matter which way you tap them out, they're just universal little pegs, if you will. All right, so we got all three of those little frame pins out. Simple, plastic, smooth, little pegs. So now what we need to do is remove the aluminum frame from the outer plastic polymer pistol grip frame. We'll just take our punch and we'll pull up on the front. So you can get your punch right through just like this, and you're gonna pull up. Now just be mindful, there's gonna be some springs here. You wanna keep your fingers pinched around that aluminum frame if you can while it's coming up and out. So you're just gonna initially grip your pistol grip frame and just pull up. It may just jump right out like that. And then obviously if you got your fingers over it, like we were saying, you know, you pull up like that and you almost pinch it as it's coming out. And that's it. So keep it all together intact. All right, and we can quickly review it. So you've got your slide stop right here, your slide stop spring. This is a really important detail to pay attention to. Just remember this long leg of the spring goes on top of the slide stop. That little short one goes down there on the slide stop. So key element when we're putting it back together. This is great because this will help you from having to take it back apart. So good information to have. Then you also have your hammer hinge pin right here. Naturally wants to move a little bit, but you can see how that trigger bar locates right there on that hammer hinge pin. There's a little tab of the trigger bar that locates underneath, right? Good things to pay attention to. Here's your hammer strike face here, the smooth portion, right? And then take a look at how that hammer spring actually locates on that hammer. So you can see that little bend, that little loop is right there towards the back. It's facing the rear of the strike face. It's definitely a good key thing to pay attention to. Um, after taking these apart so many times, you know, those are the things that I would always go back and reference, like, oh, which way is that spring supposed to go? So good things to remember. And the other thing to point out is the way this trigger return spring is held in place is by that pin on the trigger, which is right there. All right, so what we're gonna do is tap out that pin. We're just gonna hammer it from this direction out. That's gonna release the trigger return spring and all the linkage, and we'll be off to the races. It'll be a matter of just quickly replacing that. A couple springs, done. All right, so before we hammer out the trigger, let's go ahead and remove the trigger bar. Just be careful that trigger return spring is going to snap, pop forward just like that. All right, keep your fingers out of the way. We'll set the trigger bar aside, then we'll flip it over. And the slide stop, we'll go ahead and pull up and out on that. All right, and then the spring, go ahead and set that aside as well. So we're good now. We can also, while we're at it, since this hammer hinge pin naturally just wants to fall out, we'll go ahead and just pop that out, set it all aside so we don't have to worry about it as we're hammering out that trigger. So you can see there's a hammer hinge pin, just a smooth pin all the way around. So you can see there's a hammer hinge pin, just a smooth pin all the way around. All right, and then here's your hammer, hammer spring, and your hammer seat, all one unit there. And then just pay attention while we've got it out. You know, here's the smooth strike face of the hammer right there. So that's what's gonna be going forward. All right, and then you can see there's the loop on that hammer spring. So it gives you some orientation, gives you an idea how we're gonna put the spring back in. Always a good little note to pay attention to. Now what we need to do is hammer out that pin that's holding in the plastic trigger. And that's also gonna release the trigger return spring and the trigger axis. All right, so let's go ahead and just tap out with our 1 16th inch punch. We're gonna tap out that pin that's holding the trigger in place. All right, it's in there pretty good. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of tapping. Just make sure it's uh, lined up. 
All right, there you go. You can start to see that pin on the plastic trigger coming out. All right, just a couple more good taps and we'll be on our way. There we go. So it's like a little barb pin there that grabs that plastic. All right, so even though we got that barb pin out, you can see the trigger still held in place. That's the way it works. So that pin is what actually keeps that trigger return spring lined and in place. All right, that pin goes through that loop on the trigger return spring. So we're gonna do the same thing. You know, then your trigger axis here, which is basically the trigger hinge pin. All right, so we can just push that out from the other side. Pops right out. There it is there. There's that little tab there, which is what links the trigger bar together with the trigger. All right, and here's our plastic trigger here. All right, you can see that big seam line in the middle there. Not very comfortable, plus it's a really sharp point at the end. A little tiny curve, barely fits your finger. So it'll be nice to replace this. Not to mention you can't really take it apart too many times without it just losing all structural integrity there. That barb would hardly hold in there very well after it continues to get removed and removes plastic with it. So you can set these factory parts aside, keep them in a bag, whatever. And there's your frame, pretty much all stripped down. So we're good to go now, we can rebuild it from the ground up. So this is fun, good little project. What I love about our trigger is you will not have to bore that hole out. And you know, there's some other triggers out there where they require you to bore that out because they put in a bigger pin. We've got a way that'll just fit right in that hole, which is awesome. So let's go ahead, put this baby back together. All right, so now that we all got a bunch of pieces laying on our workbench together, let's go ahead and review quickly just what we have so we can easily digest this. So you got your aluminum frame here, you got your trigger axis, then you've got your hammer, your hammer spring and your hammer seat, still in one assembly, we need to replace the spring still. And that's what we're gonna do first thing from here. And then you got your hammer hinge pin, that smooth pin, then you've got your slide stop here, your slide stop spring, and then you've got your takedown pin, and you've got your trigger bar, and here's the Imcarbo replacement springs that we still need to install, which is a lighter trigger return spring, lighter hammer spring. And then you got your plastic frame pins here, the pegs, that's what holds it all in place in that plastic polymer frame. All right, so let's go ahead and replace this hammer spring here on this hammer assembly. So you can see here's your hammer strike face here. You can see there's the loop bend. That's exactly what we're gonna do when we put the Imcarbo lighter spring on. Now, an easy way to get this off, just to tap it out with your punch from this side. We're just gonna tap out this little pin here from this side so we can create enough space to drop in our hammer spring and then we'll push it back the rest of the way through. So we'll just lay it on the bench block and we will just use our 3 seconds inch punch. And we're just gonna tap it out partially. So we've got a little bit more to go. All right. It's just barely hanging in there. So that was just enough to get it out. Makes reassembly a lot easier. So there's just a little bit of that pin sticking through. I'm just gonna give it another tap or two so we can make the installation a lot easier. All right, perfect. So we're ready to go. So now we just need to remove this pin here that's holding the hammer spring and the hammer seat. So if you got a paper clip, really works well. Or you can even use that trigger return spring, the factory one that you just removed. And we just need to get that pin out. Doesn't really matter how you do it. It's just a matter of kind of getting under it and popping it right out just like that. So you just get under it and pop it out and that little, and that little paper clip usually does the trick. All right, so we got our little pin and then we can pull our hammer spring right out. Okay, same orientation as what we want to replicate. So we'll set that factory spring aside. We're gonna throw our M-carbo spring in. loop just like that. You can see there's that tab on the hammer seat. So we throw it right in. And then we'll throw our pin in there. And we'll get that portion to lock in place. Just push down with your little micro tip, make sure it's fully seated. All right, so it's locked and located there. And now we've got the proper orientation to drop it right into our hammer and we are good to go. So. What I like to do here, I find it's just simple, is you take those pliers. If you don't have pliers, you can just go ahead and hammer away on it with your punch, but if you got the pliers, man, you just delicately just push it right through. Just like that. All right, gets it located in place. Now you can finish the job with your punch. Just kind of make sure it's, you know, even on both sides. So we'll Take our punch and give it a little tap or two just to make sure it's slightly recessed on both sides. You don't want anything causing any interference or friction. All 
All right, good. So the pin's recessed on both sides. All right, you can see we got the proper orientation there. That little loop facing the back side, right? The strike face here, nice smooth portion of the leg going all the way down so we can drop this assembly right into our pistol grip here in a second. Now we need to go ahead and put the aluminum frame back together. This is a good time to go ahead and open up our PF9 flat target trigger. So we'll do that now. We can go over a couple of things that are different with it compared to the factory. 6061 aircraft grade aluminum. And then you got some hardware to match. So really nicely machined. You can see you got some threaded holes there for some screws, which we're gonna go over here in a second. So in this kit, you've got two smaller set screws with an Allen key. And you got one long and skinny set screw with an Allen key. So we're gonna save the long and skinny one till the end. These two little short ones, right? We're gonna use those right away. Cause we gotta get them set up and ready. And these are the 348. These are the 348 set screws with that 50,000s hex key. And what we'll do is we'll put some blue 242 Loctite on them and we'll get them started in the trigger. So this is your pre-travel and over-travel adjustment right here. So get you a little dab blue 242. We'll start on this. We'll start with our pre-travel set screw. Make sure you get those threads lined up perfectly. Don't want to strip it out. All right, so go ahead and get it in there. If you got any excess Loctite, you can wipe it off. I like to leave about three threads showing on the front there. And then on the back set screw, this is your over travel. We're going to screw it all the way in. So we set it up perfectly. This is the perfect length so that these will both be threaded all the way in. A little dab of Loctite. So we set it up perfectly. These will be both threaded in and touching one another. You know, that's a through hole that's threaded. Make sure you get the threads lined up. Now, you see that? You can keep tightening it and you're gonna move the forward screw. So that's what I love about this is you only need to adjust it from one side because it's gonna automatically adjust the other. So let's go ahead and adjust the front while it simultaneously adjusts the back. I think this really makes a lot of good sense. Really smart design. A lot of thought went into that, which is cool. So we got our three threads showing right there and we got the appropriate over travel right here. And so we can continue to adjust it once it's back in, but this is a good start. You know, it would be harder to do, get them started once it's assembled. So good place to start. Now let's put the rest of it back together. All right, we're gonna go ahead and install our trigger into the frame. I'll throw a little synthetic grease on there. I mean, this thing is so dry, it's brand new. A little synthetic grease right there, some good lubricity, really helps just on the head of that trigger there. All right, so we'll drop the trigger right in the frame like so. You'll notice there's that cutout there, which is for the trigger axis, right? So that drops right in and through. And then this is the tricky part. So what we have to do is line up the hole on the trigger axis, that pin that we just dropped in, while simultaneously lining up the hole on the trigger. So you can see the hole is closed right there. All right, so I'm moving the trigger Holes closed, it's open. So I've got the trigger axis, you know, basically at the 12 o'clock here with that little tab. And then I'm moving the trigger to get those threads lined up. So you can see them lined up perfect right there. And that's about the orientation you want. All right, so what we'll do is we'll get our little, our little long and skinny set screw, the 256. All right, it comes with a 035 thousandths of an inch Allen key. All right, so we're gonna get our long and skinny set screw there, the 256 set screw with that 35 thousandths Allen key. All right, those come together. Not many of us have a tiny little Allen key like this, so that's handy. All right, and the nice thing is this set screw is gonna fully thread in to place. It's gonna be completely captured, but just to be safe anyway, we'll throw some 242 in there on those threads. All right, now we've got everything ready. We've got our set screw, we've got our Loctite. It's very important to make sure you get those threads lined up so don't force it in there. You know, you want to make sure you get the threads started correctly. So don't really torque it down until you can feel those threads biting. 
And those are super fine threads, so we definitely don't want to be too aggressive with it. You know, we had to have a very narrow set screw to fit through that hole. All right, so it's threading in nicely. Just take your time with this part, don't be in a hurry. And then what we'll do is we're gonna check and make sure that it's going through. All right, cool. So we're all the way through there, you can see it. And what we'll have to do obviously is back it off so we can put that trigger return spring in there. But most importantly is to get it to locate, right? So that we can rest assured it started and we're not trying to balance the spring. We're trying to balance the trigger bar. We're just taking it one piece at a time, which makes sense. All right, I'm not backing it all the way off. Just enough so I got clearance to drop in that spring, but it's still locking and locating that trigger axis pin there. All right, we're taking the lighter trigger return spring. And we're gonna drop it right in. So that loop is what's gonna be captured. And then notice the orientation of the leg. Basically, same orientation as the trigger. And we're gonna push that coil all the way in. And you wanna make sure that it's basically lined up perfectly to receive that pin, all right? Pushing those coils in really helps just to ensure that it captures that coil so that leg may be kind of canted for a second. That's okay. And then just push down on it, even with your fingernail. You know, it's not gonna hurt it. And then tighten it the rest of the way up. And that set screw is gonna be completely captured in that trigger which is awesome, rock solid, not going anywhere. All right, then make sure it's good and snug. And then we wanna check and make sure that the trigger moves freely, no bind, nothing grabbing, perfect. All right, now we can put the trigger bar in place and the rest of the components back in this frame. All right, now we can go ahead and install our hammer and hammer spring assembly. What I like to do is take a little synthetic grease, put it right there on that hammer engagement surface. Just helps. Every little bit helps. Increase the lubricity a little bit, even on the sides. No need to have it uh, dragging. All right, we're gonna have. All right, we're gonna go ahead and insert it just like this. So your flat strike face facing forward towards the trigger. Slide it right in. All right, drop that pin right in. Doesn't matter which way you want to put the pin in. There is a little bit of a lead end on it. That'll make it a little bit easier. Drop it in place. All right, so you can see it's all set up here. So we got our hammer and hammer spring assembly installed. Now we can go ahead and drop in our trigger bar. That little flat right there is gonna locate under the hammer. And then this hole is gonna locate right there on the trigger axis. And then we're gonna wind back our trigger return spring. Drop it right in place. There's a little cut out there in that trigger bar where that little bend on the trigger return spring will locate. So it should move up and down. All right, go ahead and just keep it captured, flip it over. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and drop in our slide stop. Locates right there in the trigger axis, just like that. And then remember this spring, short leg goes in the bottom, long leg on top, and then we're gonna capture it right here, in that little cut out. And then just keep some good tension on it because this one will wanna spring off on you. But it looks just like that, all right? And then we're gonna drop this whole assembly right into that plastic polymer frame. You know, it's a, usually a snug fit. So I'll take a little bit of synthetic grease or you can use CLP and I'll just kind of lube up the front a little bit on this aluminum frame before it goes into the plastic because it just naturally wants to grab. So what we'll do, so what we'll do is we'll drop in our hammer spring and seat just like this. You can see we're going in this direction and we rotate the frame, get it all lined up Get that trigger in place. You're gonna pull back on the trigger a little bit as you nose dive that aluminum frame forward. And you're gonna to have to really keep an eye on those set screws as you're pushing that aluminum frame in. Because if you don't keep it centered, it'll wanna grab the edge of that polymer. So keep that trigger centered and we will push in the frame. I find it's easier just to make sure you get the frame in. Now we'll focus on getting that hammer block in place. So you'll just take your micro tip flathead and you'll just pry up on the back of the frame. All right, keeping a good grip on the front. Just prying up to create a little bit of space here. And there's your hammer block right there, which acts like the sear, all right? So that's what we're gonna push forward of the hammer. So we'll push it all the way forward. 
All right, and then we're gonna quickly compress it and remove our flathead just like that. And you'll notice there is your hammer block right there. You can see it just forward of the hammer and you can actually pull on it. So it should be forward. You should be able to, to move it forward. It shouldn't be captured at all by that hammer. All right, very critical. Okay, so we're all set. Everything's good to go. Now we can go ahead and drop in those plastic frame pins. You know, get them started all the way around. And then we'll hammer them all in at the same time. All right, cool. So we're pretty much there. Now we just need to set the tension on the hammer spring. All right, so now we just need to set the tension on that hammer spring there. So I'm gonna pull up on that hammer seat and I'm riding along those channels. You can see that, right? And once I get past those channels, I'm just gonna pull it up and just basically get it to jump those little channels right there and lock that peg in place on the back of the frame. It's gonna be under a good amount of tension. So it's pretty much there. And you can see it almost made it. It's just a matter of just pushing it over just a hair and it'll snap right in place just like that. So that's the idea. Kind of just give it leverage and let it, let it do the work. It'll snap in place, lock and locate. All right, and then the hammer has to be back when we do put it back together. You can see that it is under tension. Just make sure that hammer is locked back. So if you do pull the trigger and drop the hammer, you're gonna have to get it all the way back. Uh, just leave it like this. We're gonna function check it in a second. But you should see that trigger bar moving, the hammer moving, everything's engaging and working properly. And we can play with setting our pre-travel over travel at the end. Let's just get it all back together. We're pretty much there now. So we'll take our complete slide assembly. You know, we replaced the guide rod, the recoil springs, and the firing pin spring. All right, now, good little trick is take your 3 32 inch punch, make sure you've got that lug on the barrel lined up, dropping it right in that hole there. Now we'll go ahead and push the slide back, lock it, pull out the punch, and then we're gonna drop in our takedown pin. Hear that good little wonderful snap, that's what we want. All right. Heck yeah, man, we are done. Nice. All right, now we can set our pre-travel. So you can see there's a little bit of pre-travel there. Now remember, if you put too much of a pre-travel adjustment on here, you're gonna have a dead trigger. Now, that's also why we Loctite it. So it shouldn't be anything that concerns you. It's just a matter of making the adjustment correct and then letting the Loctite obviously dry. It takes about 24 hours to fully cure. So, but anyway, I mean, as long as you don't go out and shoot it right away and just check it. All right, now we need to go ahead and do a function check. Go ahead and pull the trigger, leave it depressed, let go, listen for the reset. Good, awesome. Now, if at this point you got a dead trigger, it's entirely possible because of all the adjustments we have here. So you got a pre-travel adjustment and over-travel adjustment. There is a certain amount of pre-travel and over-travel that this pistol requires for it to function properly. Now, if that is something that's out of your comfort zone, you can remove the set screws. You don't have to run it with the set screws. You could run one, so you could run a pre-travel or an over-travel, or you could run both like this and just make sure the adjustment's correct. It's designed to have both. You're allowed to adjust the pre-travel and over-travel and still have a good functioning, reliable pistol. Now there is the field expedient way, which is take your needle nose pliers and then just adjust it that way to get it you know, as fast as possible. Or you can obviously do your adjustment with the Allen key that's included. All right, but what we'll do, if you're gonna do it with the pliers, make sure you don't screw up those threads on those set screws. But what you'll do is you will tighten up both sides and until you feel them pressing against each other. So this is if you had a dead trigger or if you're just trying to fine tune your over travel, pre travel adjustment. You know, we start by making sure both are completely tight against one another, which they are. So both set screws are nice and tight against one another. And what I could do is to induce that dead trigger malfunction. So it's functioning now, but I've got them both tightened up against each other. If that is the case, I would say you're good. I wouldn't mess with it because there's, you know, obviously a certain amount of pre-travel, a certain amount of over-travel required. So if you've got them both in there, and they're in that acceptable range, I'd say you're done and get on down to the range. But if you wanna go a little further, maybe you wanna know where the limit is, you can go ahead and tighten 
the over travel, which is going to push the set screw on the other side. So it's gonna really reduce that pre-travel you have, obviously give you a little extra over travel. So it's kind of like a give and take here. You know, you're gonna get one or the other. So say the pre-travel bothers you the most, then you'll tighten up the set screw. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can ensure that the set screws are touching at all times. So by tightening one, you're loosening the other. And if you can't get a good bite on it, then you can use those needle nose pliers or just start on the other side like that. That really worked well. It's just a little tight access right here. You could also trim this down. You could also bend this. Just an Allen key that comes with the kit. So we're giving it a few quarter turns here, mainly just to expedite this process. All right, so it's still functioning just fine. Good. So we'll keep going. So we're sacrificing a little over travel for the sake of reducing some extra pre-travel. But really with this pistol, it's required to have both. All right, we're still golden. Still tightening it up. Basically waiting until we get that dead trigger, then we're gonna back it off. All right, well, I'm having a really hard time actually inducing that malfunction. So really, I'm just gonna explain, that's it. So just make sure you've got adequate pre-travel and over-travel adjustment. You do have the ability to make the adjustments. You know, also got the freedom there to obviously not even use them, but I really do like them. I mean, you help really helps minimize a lot of that pre-travel and that trigger feels amazing that nice flat face just feels awesome much better you know much more like a real pistol oh man that's beautiful nice light trigger pull great adjustment there over travel and pre over travel and pre-travel just feels more natural than what it did before let's go ahead and measure this trigger pull let's see what kind of modified trigger pull we got two pounds right on the nose Let's take one more to confirm. Two pounds, 1.4 ounces. Phenomenal. Well, there you go, guys. Really making that PF9 a real shooter now. Really love it. Now, that is a light trigger pull. Two pounds flat. That's awesome. Now, it's something some may be concerned with considering that it could be a concealed carry pistol. If you've got it in a holster, I mean, there's such a long length of pull anyway, even with the pre-travel and the over-travel adjustment, you're good to go. I mean, it's just a nice, smooth, clean double action. So it's not like it's a hair trigger in your pocket. Just a very smooth, clean, man, that feels good. Especially with that flat face trigger, it's much more natural when you're pulling that trigger. It's not like a little sharp curve like it was before. You can really get your finger down low on that trigger, get a nice, smooth, even pull. It's not like something you really gotta muscle your way through and throw shots. So really love this pistol now. It actually feels like something you could use really well at the range for target shooting, concealed carry, you name it. Really happy about this. This is the All-in-One Pro Next Level trigger job for your kel PF9. Really excited about it. Took us a long time to finally get it all together, but we did it, stayed persistent. You guys asked for it and kept asking for it. So here it is. Thank you, Carbo Brotherhood, for your ideas and your support. And as always, happy shooting.